Hello, I'm Grant from Maker's Log, and today I'm going to show you how to make a, another jamming device. But this one uh, can do multiple frequencies, unlike the other one that I showed, which was fixed frequency. Uh, this can do GSM, so mobile GSM devices, all the way down to about 433 MHz, so car keys and stuff like that. Uh, and it's dead simple, it's using one of these little uh, modules. So uh, yeah, let me, show you, let me show you what I've got. So this is the device here. Don't worry about the uh, the strange PCB, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. This is the module that actually makes it all somewhat possible. This is the CC1101 transceiver module and it allows uh, to transmit and receive on uh, various different bands, different frequencies. Uh, control now, I've just got a standard Arduino, uh, an Arduino Nano module. Uh, and then on the back here is all of the wire routing and a power distribution module. Uh, this is the smallest one I had on hand. Um, a better one is definitely needed and I'll be upgrading this one in the future. Uh, the uh, the little black wire up here that you can see, that's just the ground wire, don't worry about that. The uh, the PCB itself is actually from a uh, security conference that I done, um, or I, I did a talk at, uh, B-Size London. Uh, it was designed by Meadow Ellis on Twitter at not a Meadow. Yeah, definitely worth a follow. Um, the PCB was really cool, so this was the badges for it, and you can uh, you can use it just as a breadboard. I was originally going to use just a standard uh, proto board for this, but I remember that I had this kicking about, so I thought I may as well use it for something. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the code for it. Uh, this is just using a uh, C one hundred C one one zero one. Uh, library that you can find on GitHub. It's uh, this one here, and just using the standard library. Where are we? This one. Um, so all I've done. This is setting up uh, essentially the pins and the like. This is just copying pieces straight from the library. Then we're initializing the radio, setting out the. Uh, Bite sizes and stuff like that. These, this uh, unassigned long and uh, the packet waiting. I don't really need them in there, but it, it was easier to keep them in. Uh, then we have the void setup loop. This is just setting up the, the radio and then into the actual loop itself that's transmitting. So we're putting constant um, message, which is just hello world, uh, setting it into the packet, setting the packet length, and then sending it. And that is all that it's doing. The only um, caveat is here, the send delay. Set that to zero and it means it sends it constant. Also here is where you set up what frequency you want to use. So there is a keyword sheet in the GitHub that you can see down here. And down here he's got the various frequencies that you can set this to. So 433 up to 868. Now you can use this with other frequencies um, using different libraries, but I just find this one the easiest to use and seeing as this is just for educational purposes, that was fine with me. So it's currently set to 868 frequency. So let's turn it on and I've got here SDR software up and I'm going to attempt to do a bit of a split screen here and I'll let you see what this looks like. So I'll plug it in. And there it goes, and you'll see that up there. And that's it. And for the f the power level that this is outputting, um, is very impressive. Given um, the amplitude on that is is very good. Um, now, I would like to reiterate: these devices are illegal. All right, I have permission to do and do tests like this and make these things at under certain criteria, one of which being that I'm in a at least semi Faraday environment, which I am. So be careful when you're making these and check check the laws. But that's it on 867. So let's, uh, I'm gonna show you how I change the frequency on this and change it to uh, 433 megahertz. So let's do that now. So do it, so turn it off. Uh, as you can see, it actually stopped there before I turned that off. That's because uh, the shielding on these wires is not great. And so whenever I touch them and move stuff and it, it, it interrupts the uh, the message being sent. 
So I have this wired up in such a way so that whenever I plug this in to the computer, like that, this chip is not getting power. It's not being powered from the Arduino, it's being powered from the power distribution unit. Now the reason for that is so that um, I can do coding onto the board without actually transmitting so that I actually have to power it from here, um, the power distribution unit at the top in order to transmit so that I don't, um, if I take this you know, into the house or something and um, start tinkering about with the code, that I don't, uh, I don't start transmitting. So we're gonna go back over to the screen here and we'll just stop this for the meantime. And we'll go back into the Arduino here. And I'm going to check the keyword because I believe it is just, yep, changing that to 433. So let's do that. So here, I'm going to change this to 433. Verify that, make sure it's all tickety boo. Done. Okay. And we're going to upload that to the board. Okay, and that's done. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop this down to 433 so that you can see what's going on. There we go. And as a comparison, this, these wee peaks here that you'll see uh, just here, those are my car keys. So that's the sort of amplitude that you're seeing with a car key signal. Uh, it's not very large. And whenever I plug this device in, uh, you have to make sure to unplug it from the computer before you uh, before you plug the power in here because it'll send power down the uh, the USB lead, and you can uh, you can blow a fuse very easily. And turn it on, and there it is. You see that? See the size comparison on that? compared to my car keys, it's it's very high power compared to the car keys. So it's very easy to use this to get in the way of um, a car key signal or something like that. Um, very easy to use. Now, these are quite low power because if anyone makes these, I don't want them getting into too much trouble if they do something silly. But if you were wanting to add a bit more power, what you can do is use one of these. I talked about one of these before in my uh, Wi-Fi video, I sort of gave it laying the groundwork for this video, where I talked about amplification. And this is what this will do. If I plug this in line uh, with this, took this antenna off, plugged it in here, and hooked it up to a 12 volt supply, like these eight batteries, um, I can hook this up and I can get even more power out of it. Now, let's just turn that off actually. Um, now, again, you can do that, that is still very much illegal. Now, I'll put in the uh, description uh, down below all of the uh, sort of schematics and pinouts for this. Um, I don't have a schematic for this, for this back bit, because I, I just did this and just sort of winged it, as you can tell by some of the lovely wire uh, routing that I've done. So I think a good upgrade to this would be a switch so that I'm then able to switch between 433 megahertz, 800 megahertz, 900 megahertz, all that good stuff and be able to vary between the frequencies. Um, I think that'd be an upgrade for the future and also maybe uh, replacing this and making it battery powered so it's portable. Um, that would be a good one. I did try this using a 9 volt battery but it just wasn't able to supply enough current um, to get it off up and running. So I'll maybe try that in the future. But yes, um, if you've liked, please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, we also have Patreon. If this, in fact, was paid for by uh, the Patreons, uh, they helped me buy these chips. They're not expensive, but, you know, hey, that was bought by them. Freaking great guys. So if you want to go check that out, um, links all are all in the description. And we also have a Discord server now. Um, link in the description if you want to just chat about how to jam things that you shouldn't. So yeah, I'll uh, see you later.